Hello and welcome to Benno Cam. Bit of a different video for you today because we are going to look at a Chieftain tank. Now I already have several military vehicles so it's going to be very interesting to look at a Chieftain because it's the ultimate big toy for the lineup. Just on my way to pick up Vinny and we're going to go take a look. Right, meeting up with Tom now. How's it going, Tom? You ready for some tank shopping? I'm always ready for Yay. tank shopping. <laughs> I see a tank. <laughs> look good at the farm, that would. That would look very good. So, this is the vehicle. This is the potential new restoration project. And this is a Chieftain main battle tank. And as you can see, this has been parked up for a long time. It still has its 120mm gun. And everything else is still on it. I believe this is a Mark 10. So this is the one with the added armouring on the turret, which we'll show you in a second. And yeah, uh, still got its side skirts and all its bins. They're all looking a bit worse for wear, as you can see. And we're going to get up on it now. And we're going to see... How bad it is. It looks like it's been in the hedge for a while and everything's looking pretty bad but it's going to be very interesting to see what it's going to be like inside. I'm just going to see if I can climb up on. We've just been in and seen the owner who basically said help ourselves and have a good look. So that's where the driver's compartment, that's where the driver gets in and out of that little compartment there. You can just see his periscope which is here. And then this is the turret. This is even rusted through in places on the on the armour panels. This is the added armour on the turret. And that's the commander's hatch. And this is the one which in a minute we're going to be cutting off. So this is how we're going to get in. He hasn't got the keys for it anymore. Lost the keys, so we got permission to cut that off. We're going to go in and have a look inside. That's the commander's cupola. This is where your GPMG goes. Still got the mount for it. And then there's all your periscopes so that you've got vision all the way around. And yeah, it's certainly gonna take a fair bit of cleaning up. And then here's the engine bay with the engine hatches. So it's also gonna be nice to try and lift some of these. And we'll see if we can get a little peek in to see what the engine bay's like, so. There's the main exhaust, that's the gun clamp as well for when you're in stowage you put the turret around and the gun clamps in this direction and that's your little exhaust for the little small engine that's got it's not only has it got a main engine it's got a donkey engine as well for running the electrics and charging the batteries and starting the main engine look at the state of these bins they are well well rotted they haven't lasted very well out in the old Cornish air unfortunately Vinny's up here doing a little bit of gardening. How's it going, Vinzo? Yeah, just clearing off the uh, foliage to get to the driver's hatch. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. Right, we've had a good look around the exterior. It's time to have a look inside. We're gonna go get some tools now, and we're gonna open up some of these hatches that haven't been opened in a long time. Gotta be careful where we put our feet here. Don't wanna go down through. And yeah, I reckon, I reckon that's the one. We'll get some tools and open that up. So get me uh, yeah. battery saw. Let's do it. The cordless key. I got a whole variety of weapons there if you need a selection. <laughs> Gonna need a bigger bar. Bigger bar or a bigger Vinny. It's not even moving, is it? The bar is flexing. Yeah, that's not moving, is it? <laughs> no, it doesn't seem to be. I've had none of that for a while. <laughs> See the bar flex. How about that one? <laughs> what do you think? I don't want to get it too much and damage it. Yeah. Oh, success. You ready? Do it again. 
Oh, we're in, Vinzo. <laughs> We are in. <laughs> oh my goodness. That looks lovely, doesn't it? First peek inside. <laughs> hmm. Right, let's go for it. Let's see if I fit. It's not a very big hole. stuff going on in here right so turn my light on so this is inside this is obviously the breach just put my feet down here which isn't in too bad a condition so yeah that's the breach seems to have been left all greased up which is quite nice this gun is actually still live, so if we are going to buy this, it's going to need to be deactivated in some way. Which always seems a bit of a shame, but this is actually ready to go if we have the shell for it. And yeah, this is looking around all the different different bits and pieces. Here's all where all the shells are all stored. And then we've got various other electrical boxes. It seems quite a lot of corrosion here where the water's coming through the hatch. And then panning the other way. This is the commander's seat here. So this is where the commander would be seated. <laughs> all the electrical boxes are all just looking really hanging, really awful. And then this is the main site. And there's all your periscopes with the little commander's cupola, which is actually leaking as we speak. And then this is the gunner's seat here. So this is where the gunner would be seated. Look at that, look. <laughs> little go button. Bang! We'll try in a minute to see if the gun will elevate and rotate. So that will be the traverse gearbox. Hopefully it spins, but it probably is seized. What else have we got? All sorts of bits and pieces. I don't even know what half of these pieces are, to be honest with you. I'm not familiar with Chieftain, so this is all very new to me. Uh, yeah, all kinds of bits and pieces going on here. Very cool, but also this is a massive project. There's an awful lot of work to be done inside here. But it's not too bad. I mean, it's not a write-off. It's not horrendous. These are actually the shell holders. So they, I believe that the shells were stored in like wet storage, and that's where what these are. These are um, these were filled with water for in case there was an internal explosion. So I think that the propellant was stored in here, and then your heads were stored in here. I believe but someone will probably correct me on that. And yeah, the turret is actually traversed around as well, 90 degrees. So the driver's compartment is actually up through there, which I'm gonna try and squeeze down through in there in a minute. And we might even be able to fit in there. So this is the data plate, which would tell us the number of the vehicle, which should be stamped on here, but that's looking pretty hanging. I'm gonna try and rub that up in a minute try and clean that and see if we can see what number it is that'd be really interesting to get its army number because we can get all the history on it then right i think we might be able to read this data plate now so i'm going to put the camera in and see if we can see it so that is it there oh yeah i reckon you're gonna be able to see that i can't quite see it from where i am but right it's occurred to me i can fit down into the driver's compartment so the best thing we're going to be able to do is just chuck the camera down in there and hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit more than i can and that is down in there so that is the driver's compartment must be the back of his seat and yeah i can't actually fit down through this hole i think that's supposed to be some kind of emergency escape but i can't get down through there unless this seat comes out no nope. So we're not going to be able to get much better look at that. Uh, we've had a look at most of these other bits and pieces already. But yeah, that's the commander's seat. And I mean, look at all this corrosion. I mean, just everything electrical in here is so wet and so 
this is going to be a massive lot of work to try and get this back to something like it. It's just such a shame that it's been left get as bad as this, but I guess it's a lot of stuff to to look after and you've only got so much room inside, you can't keep everything dry, so it's in this state now and that's that. But um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if an awful lot of this stuff doesn't work anymore. But there you go. A little label here has just amused me. A bit of lethal high voltage, just what you want uh, sat right next to you in the seat. It's good to know, isn't it? That's the power supply for the range finder, apparently. Yeah, so you're going to be sat next to a lethal high voltage box, which is dripping in water, which is nice. No massive queue of volunteers going to be wanting to sit in this when we get it going driving around, I think. Right, going to get back out up through this hatch now. I'm absolutely amazed how little room there is in there, actually, compared to the Abbott. Like, this turret and hull just seems to be absolutely massive, and I don't know where where all that room is taken up, because it's, there's really not much room in here, but but there you go. I don't really know what I was expecting, just a bit more room than this, I expect. But an awful lot of it is taken up by this massive breech block here, and this massive gun, which is all still in place and still live, so it's gonna need to get deactivated, sadly. They won't sell it to me in a live state, which is an even bigger shame, but imagine the fun we could have with that. <laughs> So yeah, we're going to get back up now and see if we can get down through the driver's hatch, which looks pretty seized up, but we'll give it a go. I'm used to it. It's interesting, to say the least. Probably be better with that other hatch open, I'd imagine. Oh yeah. <laughs> and unfortunately we were not able to get this driver's hatch open which would have been really good to have a look in there, but that's gonna have to be another day. Right, we're going into the engine bay. <laughs> Vinny's had his wheat a bix Right, so that's your gearbox. Doesn't look too bad. <laughs> and then that's your that's your fan pack. Oh my goodness. That's pretty hanging. Look at the, uh, these are where your belts should go. Look, there's no belts on it. I don't know why there's no belts on it, but there should be some belts on that. Water damage, oh my goodness, look at this, look. Yeah. And then there's the engine packs. Looking a bit, a bit grim. Yeah, you can't really see much from from in the back here. I'll try and lower this down and get a bit of a glimpse down in there more. But now that we've actually been inside and realised its number, you can actually see its number. I couldn't see it before, but you can see there 04 EB39. You can just about make that out now. Couldn't quite see that before I knew it, but now that we know it, it's a bit more obvious. Ought to show you this as well. Another little nifty attachment. Pull that outlet and you go, hello tank, can you hear me? Oh, no answer. <laughs> right, that is that. Pad locked up, all secure again, so. Right, so that is this chieftain all locked back up as we found it, so yeah. It's been an interesting look at this one. I don't know whether or not I will actually be buying this Chieftain or not, but this is a big project. So somehow we have to get this home. We have to get the turret swung back around in line, and then we have to find a haulage contractor who is willing to get this winched aboard, because it obviously doesn't run, winched aboard a low loader and carried home, which is quite a bit of a mission. But I'm sure there are people out there who would be able to do that, but whether or not it is a viable option as a restoration project, I do not know. So, thanks for watching this video, but we will contact you again soon as to what we're, what we're going to do, whether or not we're going to buy this and do it up. So yeah, don't forget to subscribe because I've got lots of other videos about military vehicles. And yeah, catch you again soon for more videos.
Thank you today for Vinny for giving me a hand. Cheerio. He loves it really. It's his next restoration project. You can tell he's very excited about it. And yeah, we will catch you again soon for more videos.